once again, we gather around God's table and God's word. And it's Skip Prosser who gathered us around God's word and around God's table. When Skip came back here as head basketball coach, I walked into his office one day because he wanted to talk to me about team masses. And he said he wanted one mass a week, and that at the first one, he wanted me to tell the team why they should pray. And he talked to me about a number of instances in his life when he learned how to pray, when he found God. And they were instances that dealt with failure, with limitation, and with death. So I looked at him and said, Skip, at that first Mass, I am not going to talk to them about prayer. You are. It's going to be more real, more effective, and more believable if you, their coach, talk to them about prayer than if I do. I'm a professional prayer person. <laughs> They're not going to believe me. <laughs> but they'll believe you. And that Saturday afternoon in the chapel in Coleman Hall, Skip sat there and talked to his team a man who had learned something through pain, through suffering, through failure, who had learned about prayer and who had learned about God. And he talked to his team, and he mentioned three instances in his life. And I want to mention one of them. He talked about being a teacher. And how many times in the past nine days have we heard Skip was a teacher before anything else? He taught them what he had learned. And he talked about being a teacher and being a head coach in a high school in West Virginia and taking his team to the championship and before the game, learning that a car full of students who were driving down to be there had skidded off an icy road and died. And in the presence of death, Skip prayed. And we are here in the presence of death, and we pray. We can run away from what death is, but we shouldn't. Death is ugly, death is painful, death mocks at us, death laughs at us. It leaves us with a sense of emptiness, a heaviness, a void. And when someone we love dies, a friend, a husband, a father, a son, a brother, it makes us wonder whether loving another human being is really worth the pain that comes when death mocks us. Skip knew that, Skip prayed, and we pray. Every death, every death as the 17th century British poet John Donne reminds us, every death diminishes every one of us who is a human being every one of us created in the image and in the likeness of God. But Skip's death touches us more than an ordinary death. The reaction to his death has been amazing. I was walking on this campus on Friday morning, a week ago yesterday, and a groundskeeper stopped me to tell me a Skip Prosser story and to tell me how much he liked Skip and how good Skip was because being head coach here 
never stopped him from talking to grand people and maintenance workers. He talked to everyone. And when I mourn, I tell stories. I call up people who know the deceased. And I've done that this week. And we've all had our Skip Prosser stories. One of my favorite was when he used to talk about being a football player in high school and having a broken arm and his father's refusal to let him get out of the game because he still had a good arm. <laughs> now, if I or any of my friends told that stories about our fathers, there'd be a real edge to it. But with Skip, he sort of smiled, said, that guy was a piece of work, and my mother's a living saint for living <laughs> with him. I remember Skip's devotion to his sons and how he would take time whenever he could to drive back to be with them, even if it meant that he got back here and he got two or three hours of sleep and then went to work again. I remember how he used to look at me and tell me how sad and frustrated he was that he couldn't go to communion with his boys and how that led him to the office in Bellarmine Chapel to Rosemary Conrad to a process of entering the church that Rosemary and Lori Massa took him through and how Skip discovered something that was present in his life but he wasn't fully aware of a deep spirituality in a deep sense of God. I've been thinking a lot about those three stories that Skip would tell year after year when he was coach here at the first team mass of the year. And Skip was a teacher, but when he was talking to his teams, he wasn't a teacher. He was a human being who had learned something through pain and through suffering. And he was opening his heart to the people he coached to tell them, this is something I learned, and I learned it painfully. And I want you to know about it now so that when you encounter these painful moments, you will be able to pray and you will be able to find God. And I have to admit that in his office when he talked to me about why he wanted his team to know about prayer, I got teary-eyed. And every time I heard Skip give that same reflection on prayer, it was tough for me not to cry. And that chapel was incredibly silent. Skip was, t was sharing, not teaching, but sharing himself out of that pain. And the more I thought about those stories and the more I thought about Skip, something became very, very clear to me. And at least I think this is why everybody in this room everybody who gathered at Wake Forest, and all of those people who have written comments into websites and blogs about Skip have a story about him. Skip started out as a good guy. Who else could smile about a father who made you play football with a broken arm? He had a sense of God. But those events in his life that got him to pray deepened that sense of God and made him more vulnerable, more broken, more compassionate, more approachable, more lovable, 
and more loving. And people sensed that in Skip. And Skip operated out of that love, that ability to love and be loved, that brokenness, and that vulnerability. He could simply take his life and break it open in a chapel and share it with those basketball players whom he loved. And we mourn the loss of Skip, of a great human being, of a great man, of a good Christian, who just also happened to be a husband and a father and a son and a brother, and a teacher and a coach, and a coach who realized that, yes, life does go on after basketball. And what happened at Wake Forest on Tuesday at the funeral liturgy, what happens today at this memorial liturgy, is not going to take away our pain, our sense of loss, our tears. We're going to have to cry some more. We're going to have to go on telling those Skip Prosser stories that make our lives as rich as they are. And sometimes we're simply going to have to hug each other. Hug each other and cry. But what we do today, what happened on Tuesday, offers us hope. Skip died too suddenly. Father Jim Hoff, who, using Skip's success record, got this place built with along, a, with along with a lot of you who are sitting here today. He used to say he was glad he was dying of cancer because he had time to say goodbye. We've never had that time to say goodbye to Skip. Skip didn't have that time to say goodbye to us. There are conversations that are unfinished. There are things that we wanted to say to him that we weren't able to say. But God offers us hope that we will be in his kingdom, that rather than being seated around this table of the Lord, we will be seated around the table of the Lord in the new heaven, in the new earth, where all peoples go to be around that table, where every tear will be wiped away, where we shall see God face to face, and where we shall all become like God.